Hello everybody, this is Mario Cazares here, and today I will be showing you how to mod a soft Dance Dance Revolution pad into a hard pad. Um, this video tutorial is based off of Penguin Lord's DDR soft pad modification tutorial, which I'll put a link to in the description. The mod basically fixes the issue of the soft pads moving around and slipping about, scrunching and wrinkling up, and uh, just improves the pad's performance overall. It looks nice, it works great, it's just a great mod to do if you're on a low budget. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so for the, um, for the plywood here, we have a four foot by eight foot which is um, actually the st a standard size. And we're gonna need to cut it to uh, 39 inches by 35 inches. So we're gonna start by measuring the 35 inch side. Put a mark on here, 35 inches. And the same on the other side, 35 inches. Okay, you can take a piece of wood and measure all the way across cutting. Yeah, so as you can see you can just use a um, regular uh, piece of wood as a ruler just in case you don't have a or a straight edge just in case you don't have a one like that one over there which is broken so that's why we're using wood. Okay, so if you don't have a cutting Salt. table so what you're going to do is use a couple blocks of wood to elevate the whole plywood that you're going to cut and make sure that the line is not over the block when you cut with your saw because your saw blade is going to go all the way through. And it'll so, go through that, it'll go through the board on the bottom that's holding, that's yeah, your table. That's just holding it up, elevating it off the ground. So that's just a little tip for you guys. want to make sure we have our safety glasses on because there's going to yes. be a lot of wood moving up. Here we go. Being held up by the block, mm -hmm. so it went all the way through. Good, sweet. Okay, so now we got our um, 35 inches. 35 inches by. No, this is 48. So we're gonna 48. cut it down to 39. On both sides. Inches. Get close to the edge. Just a straight line. So when you're finished, you want to have 35 inches by 39 inches. So it should look something like this. Okay guys, so um, right here we have the list of supplies that you're going to need. You might need some packaging tape or other things, but these are just the main things you need. So of course, you're going to need a soft dance pad. Um, that's something you should have already. Duct tape. It can be any color. It doesn't really matter. You're going to need some double-sided carpet tape right here. Got this at um, Home Depot. Vinyl, which we got at Walmart, and I believe it was four yards of it, but I'm not sure how much we're going to need. I'll put that at the end of the video, how much we actually um, needed out of this so that you don't buy extra. Staple gun here. Make sure you got staples, and lastly, a hammer. So uh, once you got all these things uh, organized, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to measure out the width, which we want 35 inches plus 4. So we're going to go measure 39 inches this way, and we're going to cut the vinyl all the way down to the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, like we said, uh, we're measuring from there to here, which we measured out to be 39 inches. So we just made a mark. So again, just went from that edge over there 
all the way to here, 39, and we're going to cut the strip along here once we measure that side and just going to cut it like that. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so now that we have both sides measured, we're just going to use the uh, piece of wood as a straight edge, my father calls it. And we're just going to cut along right here. So he's just cutting along this edge right here, making sure that it's nice and straight. And these are just regular scissors, they're not even nothing special about them. Okay, so we measured this across and uh, we measured to 43. 43. Oops. Which is 39 Oops. plus 4. 39 plus 4. There you go. So and you get those. leave us about 11 inches right here. 11 inches right there so that we can cut some squares, which we'll show you later. Okay, so uh, now we're cutting this end, which is 43 inches from here to here when it's straightened out. So right now it's 43 inches, and this way is 39 inches. Yes. That's excess right there, but do not throw it out. Do not throw it out. You're going to need that excess right there because we are going to be making some squares with it so to, put, inches wide. to put under the dance pad. That way you can have raised arrows. Okay, so uh, remember that excess piece that we had left over we were talking about? Um, we're going to actually use these to put them. Uh, you have your up, down, left, right arrows. We're going to actually put... Uh, cut out squares so that we can put them under the pad and that way they're raised a little bit on the pad so that whenever you actually feel around on it you can feel a little slight bump for each arrow so that you know where the arrow's at. So um, the dimensions are actually 11 inches this way by 9 inches. Well it doesn't really <laughs> matter but um, that's how we're doing it is uh, this is 11 inches and we're cutting 9 inch squares as you can see like this. Yeah, the, the excess piece was actually 11 inches, exactly. Yeah, so that, that's so. how we measured it out when we cut it. And we're going to need eight of these. So you're just gonna do what he's doing right here and repeat it eight times. Okay, so we have all eight of the vinyl uh, covers, or the, I mean the uh, squares, which are nine inches by 11 inches. We have eight of them for one pad. And these are going to be going under the arrows. And if you have extra vinyl, you can make more, but uh, this is all we're going to be using. Okay, so um, now that we got all of our vinyl pieces done, they're cut, they're put away for the moment, but they're all finished. We're going to move on to the next step, which is actually to get your dance pad. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lay it out and center it as best as you can. Once you got it centered, you're going to want to take a Sharpie or a pencil or whatever, and you're going to want to outline um, where the pad is, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so as you can see, we drew an outline across the whole thing. And you're going to want to try to keep the pad in place, but just in case that you move the pad, uh, that's what that is there for, so that you can put it back exactly where it was. Okay, so this vinyl right here, these uh, squares, uh, my dad's going to go ahead and show you how we are actually laying these out. So we're putting two of these together, um, two of them tied together. And for the left and right arrows, they're going 11 inches up and down and 9 inches wide. So it'll look like this, how we're showing you. And uh, the, the way that we did this is, uh, do you want to explain this part? We just measured 11 inches um, with the center of the arrow. 11 mm -hmm. inches gives you five and a half. So we put the tape measure at five and a half right on the on the arrow and we measured zero and eleven. Mm -hmm. Then we roll it back and it should be right at right at that mark. Yep, just like that. And you're gonna do the exact same thing for this side over here. And here it's actually switched. So instead of being um, instead of being uh, this way, which is 11 inches, it's actually this way. So the 11 inches are like this. Here. Okay, so we roughly did the same, put five and a half, which should be at the center of the, where the cord comes out, five and a half, and we measured our zero and 11. But because this arrow is further in, we had to measure this distance, which is actually four and a half inches. Okay, so we rolled this back and we measured from this line to here, four and a half inches, right? Put a mark, 
roughly the same distance and then same on this side four and a half inches to zero and then we just make sure we're like pretty well centered with 11 inches mm -hmm. it's close enough and okay. that'll put the that'll put the vinyl here instead of out here yes okay so right now we have one of the vinyl squares in place and what my dad's doing right now is we're just going to tape together the uh, tape the uh, vinyl onto the board so he's just going through each corner as you can see yes <laughs> pro tape cutting skills don't be like my dad don't waste tape it's bad for the environment okay so what you're going to just do the same thing on the on all four sides. If you want some more tape, I guess you could just put some more, but the four should be enough. And we're gonna go ahead and do that for that side, uh, this side, that side, and that side. We'll come back once we got all those taped down because it's literally just repeating the same thing. Okay, so we just got finished up uh, taping these squares to the wooden board. So as you can see, it aligns with the um, arrows. That It's just gonna raise up the, the bottom, and yeah, you can feel, you can kind of see uh, in here, there's like a raised edge right here. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be doing, we're going to be taping the carpet tape in a square-like pattern, so I'll show you what I mean. Um, here's the arrow. We don't wanna put the carpet tape here, but we wanna put it along these edges right here. Just create a square along right here, right here. And if we look at the top, move this over real quick, we're gonna have them right here in these corners. But for the top specifically, we're doing it in a way so that we don't put tape where the select and the start is. It's just trying not to get it on the buttons, but getting it in these white areas where people, uh, where there's no buttons really. <laughs> so what so. we're gonna do is cut this tape in half, actually. We're yes. gonna cut it down the seam and then that half of it will be right exactly. So that'll give us from white to white right there. So just do these four squares. Okay. So we mark four and a half inches from here to here. Four and a half inches. Put the tape down, peel this back. There we go, and, and then we're gonna do the same thing all the way in the square before we lay this flat. Yes. And once we lay it flat, it's gonna stick. So we'll show you what that looks like once we get all four on. Okay, so now we have all four of the square looking thing taped up, and we're gonna Stretch this out just a little bit. So he's gonna hold the control box and stretch out that corner over there. Place it there. And we're gonna roll this down. Gonna stretch this. Roll it down. So there we go. So now as you can see, this side is actually flat because we did it that way. We're gonna do yes. one corner, the top corners first. Okay, so. So you could do the top two corners first so you can roll this over mm -hmm. and then down. Then roll this over and down. And then when you're done with the top two, you want to do the middle one. That way you can roll this whole thing over. I'm going to tape it. And then you can roll the middle. And then your last two will be this, the two bottom corners. That way you can roll it over yes. and stretch it out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put on the... We just finished it this side, so we're going to stretch it. We're going to hold this side over here. Center the box. Take the corner. This top end is looking nice and flat, so we're going to keep going. Okay, so next we're going to do the center section, just throwing this in as a reminder so that you don't start doing these corners because then you're not going to get, be able to get to the middle. So we're going to do the middle. Okay, so we just uh, got done putting all this carpet tape on. So all these strips are on, so this is the last part. We're going to make sure to hold it down in the middle right here, the middle of the pad. Okay, so this should look something like this. You might have done a little bit better. We kind of messed up this edge over here, but uh, there we go. Okay, so we grabbed our piece of vinyl. You're gonna grab your piece of vinyl, make sure it's the right way. Uh, the way you'll know is that there'll be uh, some room on each side. So as you can see, we're just laying the vinyl on top for now. And the plan is to have one side curled up and stapled in, then stretch it out. Then we're going to cut um, an opening out for this right here. Do the other side right here. Fold it around this side, staple it. Fold it around this side, staple it around the, the wood. 
and we'll be finished. So we'll show those parts right now. Okay guys, so this is uh, day two. This is after building that first pad. The first pad worked beautifully. The second pad uh, didn't work out so well. So we'll describe the problem here. We overly stretched this corner. So the start button and this, whatever you call this, square. Circle. Circle here. Every time you, you touch or put pressure on the vinyl, it would actually set these two sensors off. So what we want to do is make sure you leave a little bit of fluffiness everywhere. Because that, mm -hmm. that leaves your sense space between your sensors. And that way when you touch it, everything will still be where it needs to be. So anyway, the point of the story is do not over tighten. Yes. Okay, so as you can see, staple there. We're stapling in the middle first. Then we're gonna staple at that staple at the edge. Then we're gonna staple at the other edge. Okay. And now that it's supported, you can add extra staples in between if you want. What's going on? Okay. So this whole side is stapled now on this side. And so now we're just gonna hammer them in. Okay. Then we're gonna hammer them in. We're gonna end up cutting this part so we can stretch it down as far as it'll go because the control box is actually uh, hindering how far down we can push. There we go. So we cut out the control box just diagonal and then straight. So now we have these two flaps and we can put it as straight as possible and go ahead and keep stapling. One in the center. Right there. So we got five. The bottom first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's turn it around. Okay. Okay, so now that we got the vinyl stapled all good, if you can see, we cut all the, uh, the edges. And I know it looks a little sloppy, but that's because we're going to be putting tape around the whole uh, edge of this, just to keep the vinyl down a little bit, but mostly for like cosmetic, just so it looks nice and it doesn't look all ghetto. But yeah, we're gonna tape all of the edges around make it look nice and we'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Okay, so we finished the tape all the way around and right now this is what it looks like. It looks pretty cool and nice and not so ghetto. The only thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna go on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and tape each edge just so that these don't uh, peel up like this and like come out. So we're just gonna do that and after that That'll be the very end of this project and we'll show you the final, uh, what it looks like at the very, very end and possibly a game or two just to show you what that looks like, but that might be a different video. So uh, yeah, let's finish this up. Okay everybody, this is the uh, final chapter of the video. So uh, it's not quite over yet, but it's been about 11 days since the build, 11 or 12 days. And I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how the pad did, um, any mistakes we made, uh, any fixes, changes we would have made, etc. Gameplay. So uh, first let's start off with gameplay. First of all, I have to say it was phenomenal. It worked beautifully. It didn't have any problems. That was our first pad though. The second dance pad that we made had some issues um, and I'll go over those real quickly. Um, first of all, we tied down the vinyl very tight and the pad to the carpet tape we put down very tight as well. This is something you want to avoid. You want there to be enough fluff in the pad so that the contacts have enough space and room to actually touch when you press the arrow and to not touch when you don't press the arrow. And what happened is when we tightened, over tightened, the contacts would be so close to each other that even just stepping on the pad would be enough to trigger arrows and buttons that we didn't want triggered or that we weren't even stepping on. So uh, we actually had to disassemble the second pad, 
figure out what the issue was first of all because we didn't know that was the issue and once we figured it out we loosened up the pad um, it was way less of a struggle than we thought to than we thought it would be uh, to reopen the pad and actually fix it so that was a really good thing to know and um, we loosened that pad got it working and right now it works perfectly well um, here are some scores that I actually got on that pad which I'm not a professional at DDR at all so um, any I didn't get a single miss from the pad it, any misses that were on there were from me from my mistakes from dancing but yeah here are some of the scores and uh, it works just as well as the first pad now that we have that fix. So to conclude, I would say that this project was a success and that the pad works very, very well. I want to thank my dad for helping out on this project, for uh, getting the supplies and helping me with the measurements, cutting and all that, th all those things. And also for Penguin Lord's tutorial about making the pad because I wouldn't have been able to do it without um, that tutorial. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this journey of creating a soft pad modification. It was really fun to make and to do and I'm really happy that my dance pad is a lot better than it was before. So again, thank you for watching and bye.